alongside the silver sparkling water of the river called Washita by the Washita Indian tribe is where Monroe, Louisiana's downtown is located. Most of the buildings of downtown Monroe were built by some of the most notable architects of their time, including New Orleans architect William Drago and Frank Lloyd Wright's student Walter Burley Griffin. That's just one reason why downtown Monroe is listed on the National Register of Historic Places. These buildings stand as a foundation of downtown's historic presence. The early 1900s were a period of great growth for Monroe, particularly with the discovery of the largest gas field in the world in 1916, and the move of Joseph A. Biedenharm, the first bottler of Coca-Cola, to the city in 1913 from Vicksburg. Downtown Monroe was bustling with construction and commerce, a robust railroad system, and barge traffic along the Washita River. For years, the downtown area was neglected and left to decay, but there was a new rebirth of interest in the restoration and renovation of downtown Monroe buildings. Several private investors began the trend, but Vantage Health Plan has now become a major player in the movement with the restoration of the old Washita National Bank building and the old Central Bank Savings and Trust building, which now houses Vantage's Affinity Health Group. We had originally made an offer on just the building, and when we walked around the building with him, uh, we were impressed with the original furniture in the building that had been here since the building opened, the original board table, uh, all the artwork on the walls. You know, they were custom watercolors, or original watercolors of the Delta Airlines airplanes, or original watercolors of the building itself, the clock outside, or some of the architectural features in the building. So we asked if it was possible that we could make another offer that would include the furnishings and all the artwork so that basically they would take their computers and copy machines and their business stuff and leave the rest. Uh, and we told them we were in interested in maintaining the historical significance and we'd like to keep all that stuff intact rather than have it um, sold or, or moved. Both buildings have deep roots in the history of downtown Monroe. A group of community leaders met with Washita National Bank directors and decided to work with them to open another bank. Central Savings Bank and Trust Company opened its doors to the public on January 15, 1906, after receiving its charter in 1905. Central's original location in 1906 was on South Grand and Gramont Streets in Monroe's first four-story building. The first day's deposits total $242,825.57. Its total resources were shown to be $398,525.34. The first 25 stockholders were some of Monroe's most influential citizens. In the summer of 1917, the bank purchased a corner lot fronting Desired Street and along the east side of Jackson Street. Mrs. Georgia Barringer sold it for $15,600. It took eight years before the existing bank building was finished in 1925. Underwood Construction Company of New Orleans built the building based on the architectural plans of T.L. Stodgill. Meanwhile, as the building was being constructed, World War I raged on in Europe. Central Bank's President Frank Stubbs became colonel of the local regiment that went overseas. Three other brave men from the bank served their country by fighting the war to end all wars overseas. In February of 1926, in honor of its 20th anniversary, the Central Bank Board authorized the purchase of a large outside chime clock, which was placed on the northwest corner of the bank building with the slogan, As Time Goes On. The clock's chimes on the quarter hour became a part of the background of downtown as Monroe continued to grow. That's when I first started using the, the deposits and writing checks. I was about 18 or 19 when that happened. I was a little girl. So I went to work with Merlin's Music. And Carolyn Apperson, whose father ran the Francis Hotel, got me the job. Well, I didn't have a bank account. I didn't have a charge account. And so I had to learn how to go to the bank, deposit the petty cash, keep the box, and do all that. And that's how I met. 
Oh, Grayson Guthrie, this handsome, tall young man. Oh, I guess we were, he was about 30, I guess, at the time. And he showed me how to write the checks and how to do all that. And, and I took it back to Worlines, and that's how I really met him. Of course, Mother and everybody knew him. And he was just such a delightful man. I just adored Grayson. And Francis was just lovely, his wife. Delta Airlines was formed in the Central Bank Director's Boardroom in 1927. C.E. Woolman, the principal founder of Delta Airlines, bought and renamed the Huff the Land Dusters crop dusting operation Delta Air Service. The airline's annual stockholders meetings were held in what became known as the Delta Room until July of 1999. That room still contains the boardroom table that was carpentered to resemble the wing of an airplane. My father knew the founders who were all from Monroe, Louisiana. And Daddy introduced me to several of them. When I was in about the fifth grade, I wrote a letter to Mr. Woolman and we corresponded. And when I was a senior at Neville, I met Mr. Woolman at the Monroe Airport when he was coming in for the stockholders meeting. That would have been October of 1959. And he had a little picture of the first Delta jet, DC-8 jet, which is right here. He had a picture, a photograph of that picture. He pulled it out of his briefcase and told all the students at Neville that were surrounding him that they had just inaugurated the first flight, jet flight from New York to Atlanta. And his wife, Helen, had broke a bottle of water over the nose of the plane to dedicate it. Central became the first bank in the area to install a night depository in June of 1929. When the stock market crashed on October 29, 1929, most local folks thought the depression was only something that affected people way up north. However, when President Franklin D. Roosevelt ordered all banks to be closed in 1933, the depression finally hit Central Bank. War clouds covered Europe as World War II began in 1939, and once more, Central Bank pitched in to serve its country during wartime in March of 1943 by loaning $10,000 to the Advanced Navigation Cadet Detachment, better known as Selman Field, to remodel buildings used in the training of navigators for the war effort. Central began expanding its branch system in the 1950s, with the opening of three more branch offices and continuing its growth in the 1960s with three more branch offices opening. With the Cold War heating up, the Central Bank Building was designated on March 27, 1963 as a suitable fallout shelter in the event of a nuclear attack. In 1988, Central Bank was purchased by Bank One, leaving a 92-year legacy of expansion and growth to meet its customers' financial needs. Then in 2004, it was purchased by Chase Bank, which would be the last financial institution to serve the public at the building on Desired since Vantage Health Plan purchased the building in 2009. After $1.1 million in renovations completed by Clint Whittington and TBA Studios, Vantage moved its first employees into the building in mid-April of 2011. Features to the building include a restored foyer, a new elevator, windows on the east side of the building framed by original pieces of tin roof, and a production studio complete with a green screen and professional lighting and recording equipment. The original marble staircase leading to the Delta Room has been restored after being covered for years with carpet. An eagle overlooks the Desired Street entrance brass doors which lead to the lobby. Today, the lobby resembles what many would remember from bygone days, with its high embossed ceiling and three magnificent chandeliers, as well as the original vast circular vault in the center of the back wall. All of the walls are decorated with several intricate plaster reliefs and pilaster columns. Long drapes cover the line of windows along Jackson Street. Numerous preserved art pieces decorate the offices and hallways of Vantage's central building. Along with renovations to the central building, a new Central Park area was created as a symbol of the rebirth and renewal of downtown Monroe. 
The park features four large planters and one large brownstone fountain to complement the adjacent terracotta colored office building, offering employees a place for relaxation and the citizens of Monroe something to admire. Vantage Health Plan is honored to continually preserve the historical significance of the Central Bank Building for the City of Monroe and its citizens.